Patient ready to go? He's already in the operating room, doctor. We've been trying to page you for ten minutes. This better be the last case of the day. What operating room? OR7. They're waiting. Great. Thank you. Hey, what's up? No, no, I need more time than that. Yeah, I'll meet you in a couple of hours. Yeah, I can move this last case along quickly. Should be a great basketball game. I gotta go. I'll keep you posted. Nice of you to join us today. Busy on your Facebook? How are you doing today, Doc? I'm good. How long is it going to take? Not long at all. Listen, I'm just going to give you a little medicine to make you feel better. Okay, am I going to be okay? You'll be just fine. We'll be out of here in no time. Don't worry. There you go. No Facebook. Heading to the basketball game tonight should be a great game. Where's your tending? She'll be here shortly. She's tied up with another patient. I can get this block completed. Block's in. I'm so excited about this basketball game. I've had tickets for weeks. So if we could just wrap this up real quick. I can Mr. Lynn? Mr. Lynn? Damn it, my patient's arrested. Get the attending anesthesiologist in here! The case we are watching is a dramatization, but clinically significant local anesthetic systemic toxicity is a very real and potentially fatal complication of regional anesthesia. Hello, I'm Guy Weinberg, Professor of Anesthesiology at the University of Illinois and the Jesse Brown VA Medical Center in Chicago. This video is part of a project by the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation to inform anesthesiologists and other physicians and nurses about best practices for managing local anesthetic systemic toxicity, or LAST. Although local anesthetics are exceedingly useful for providing perioperative anesthesia and analgesia, their utility is limited by the potential for causing severe toxicity following systemic absorption or intravascular injection. Fortunately, with early recognition and intervention, most instances of LAST are reversible. During this program, we will consider major elements in the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of LAST. Let's return now to the scene of our unfortunate patient and the imprudent resident caring for her. I think they both need help. What happened? The patient's arrested. You just went into cardiac arrest right after I gave the block. I, Where's the lipid kit? His heart rate dropped down. We got no ball. Why is he not available when the block's in here? Let's go get the kid in here right now. Nothing on the monitor. Can you tell me anything more about the patient? Well, he, uh, uh, we need the what, crash card right, in here. All right, let's just focus on getting him back. I need a 100 mil bolus. Let's go. Hang the lipid bag. Do we have epinephrine? Do we check for epinephrine? Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. All right, the pulse is getting stronger. Let's go, let's go, come on, come on. We got a rhythm. A and a blood pressure. And what now? All right, well, now we're going to continue with the lipid infusion and get the patient to ICU as soon as possible for at least 12 hours. We need to talk about what happened in there. Have you ever seen a patient develop local anesthetic systemic toxicity? No. I was aware of the possibility, but it, I'd hoped I'd never have to deal with it. Well, now you have. 
and you need to know how to handle it. Let's make sure you learn it this time. Local anesthetic systemic toxicity, which we abbreviate last, can occur in up to 1 in 500 peripheral nerve blocks, and as often as 1 in 10 of those can develop cardiovascular instability, or, as in the case of your patient, full-blown cardiac arrest. I just didn't know what to do. The one minute he was fine, and the next minute he was bradycardic. Vigilance is key to diagnosis here. Did your patient complain of any symptoms? Not sure. He was pretty sedated, but did not have a seizure. Well, it's hard to pay attention if you're distracted or the patient is over-sedated. Not all patients have seizures. Prodromes like agitation, auditory changes, and metallic taste leading to seizures are classic. But sometimes patients just become obtunded, comatose, or show no CNS symptoms. When cardiac toxicity occurs, it usually appears as progressive hypotension, bradycardia, or other arrhythmias, which you may have missed. Eventually, as in your case, a systole can occur. I had no idea. Everything just happened so fast, I barely had time to process what was going on. I guess you're right. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Timing is important when diagnosing last, and rapid intervention probably improves your chances for avoiding cardiac arrest. Immediate onset of last, less than 60 seconds after injection, suggests an intravascular injection with direct access to the brain. Delayed signs, on the other hand, can occur with lower extremity injection, delayed tissue absorption, or in a patient with low cardiac output. These symptoms can occur within a variable time frame, even presenting up to 15 minutes after the injection. I had no idea. Did your patient have any underlying disease? I, I know I should know this, but I'm not sure. I guess I was just in a hurry. I, I thought it was going to be a simple block. Big mistake. Not good. Not good at all. Patients with a history of ischemic heart disease or conduction defects are more susceptible to last. These predisposing factors lower one's threshold for local anesthetic toxicity. I know this is your last month of residency, but that is no excuse. You get sloppy, someone could die. I know. I so, know. To both avoid the risk of last and diagnose it quickly, it's important to know your patient. Age is a huge risk factor too. Both extremely young and old patients are at an increased risk. You need to know this. There's no single measure to prevent this from happening in clinical practice, but there are a few things we can do. First of all, it's important to use the lowest effective dose of local anesthetic we can. Also incremental injections of local anesthetic can help. Though it's somewhat controversial, using a tracer like epinephrine in your local anesthetic can indicate an intravascular injection, though this is less helpful in patients on beta blockers. Ultrasound guidance might also reduce the frequency of an intravascular injection. I have a question. Our patient responded quickly after you arrived. What made the difference? The main factor in his successful resuscitation was the rapid intervention after recognizing the problem, especially managing his airway. Nothing works if the patient isn't oxygenated and ventilated. Good CPR helped to maintain tissue perfusion and circulate the drugs. Finally, the lipid emulsion seemed to do the trick and get him back to a sinus rhythm. That's why you have to have that lipid emulsion kit close by. Wow, I, mean, I had no idea. Do most hospitals have this kit? Wherever you end up practicing, you should definitely find out if and where 20% lipid emulsion is available in the hospital. It should be stocked close to any site where peripheral nerve blocks are done. Lipid emulsion can reverse cardiac arrest related to last, often after traditional methods have failed. CNS symptoms of toxicity can also be reversed by lipid infusion, and case reports suggest lipid infusion should be considered early and last, possibly to prevent progression to an arrest. However, I want to emphasize, lipid infusion is only one component to an effective strategy for managing last. Again, aggressive airway management is key. Seizure suppression with benzodiazepines is your next step. 
There are many helpful resources at the ASRA website. You'll also find helpful resources at the website www.lipidrescue.org. I can't believe I didn't know about the lipid emulsion rescue technique. I really don't know what I would have done without your help today. You saved Mr. Lynn's life. I made a lot of mistakes today. Yes, but you need to learn from them and move forward. That being said, we now have to go and tell the patient and the family what happened. The family is in the waiting room. Mr. Jones, good to see you again. If it's okay, I have a medical student working with me today. She is going to be observing the procedure. Okay, Doc. All right, now, we thoroughly reviewed your medical history yesterday afternoon, discussed all risks, benefits, and options for anesthesia, answered all of your questions, and we both agreed that a nerve block was the best choice for your post-operative treatment. We are going to make sure that you are completely comfortable and pain-free during and after the surgery, okay? Okay. And that's perfect needle placement. Aspirate and give five cc's slowly. And that's the last five cc's. Good. Hey, Mr. Jones, how are you feeling? I'm feeling kind of funny. What's going on? Okay, he's having a seizure. Give him three cc's of midazolam. I'm going to give him oxygen. Somebody get help! Bring the lipid kit! Give him 100 mils of lipid. Hang the infusion. His pulse is, his pulse is getting stronger. Oh, oh, oh. It's okay, Mr. Jones, you just had a reaction to the local anesthetic. You're doing okay now. It's okay now. Just a matter of being prepared. The goal of this program is to improve patient safety in regional anesthesia by focusing on the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of LAST. What are the take-home lessons here? First, recognize that whenever we use local anesthetics, there is a risk of LAST, so be prepared. That means having a kit available with instructions or guidelines like those published by ASRA, either attached to the kit or posted in the OR. Put LAST in your differential diagnosis for any patient exhibiting unusual signs or physiologic instability following regional anesthesia. This is especially important since there is now an effective antidote, and thereby considering LAST, even when the presentation is not typical, you might save someone's life. Remember the primacy of airway management and the importance of suppressing seizures and treating LAST. Recovery is far more likely when the patient is well oxygenated and has a normal arterial pH. Consider early on the option of infusing lipid emulsion. It has been reported in the literature to tame neurologic symptoms, slow progression of toxicity, and reverse severe cardiovascular instability. Finally, remember to contact the heart or perfusion team early on when cardiovascular instability is an issue. If last persists, cardiopulmonary bypass may be your patient's last hope. You will find more detailed information on the management of last in the packet of accompanying materials. You can also go to the ASRA website, ASRA.com, to find the original documents on which our recommendations are based and the official ASRA practice guidelines for LAST. This includes treatment guidelines that can be laminated for posting in your OR suite. Good luck, and together, let's stamp out mortality and morbidity associated with local anesthetic toxicity. <laughs>